Hello friends, welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. We have just started Coding Improv. This is the third episode, episode two, and we have uh, received 10 suggestions from people in the chat. And we are now going to attempt to build something using all 10 of these suggestions. I have no idea what we're gonna build. They have no idea what we're gonna build, but we're going to attempt to incorporate all of these things into the app that we build. So let's start ideating. I like to like maybe pick one idea to be the the, the center and we will kind of build around that. Um, so we have a tournament. It could be interesting. We could do like a tournament bracket. Explosions could be fun for like maybe uh, animations. Tacos are cool. I actually created some uh, chipotle marinade last night and I have some chicken marinating in my fridge right now. Um, I'm gonna make tacos. I'm definitely gonna, I'm gonna make tacos, burritos, all that. Okay, um, the UK. It's funny that we got, we got two countries. We got United Kingdom and the Netherlands. There's banana, there's ketchup, there's university, there's climbing, there's dolphin. Hmm. Okay. I think maybe like I kind of like the, like tournament is kind of the only thing that like I gravitate towards toward what we could r center this around. But what kind of tournament could it be? Could it be a tournament of countries? Is it going to be the United Kingdom versus the Netherlands, possibly, or is it like a tournament of countries altogether? Maybe it's like countries in the Twitch chat. Oh, okay. So uh, we could have everyone in the chat set their country, and then we have some sort of challenge that they need to do. But we have the points based on the average score of people in a given country because i realize that there are a lot of people um from many different countries so um it could be that like because you could be the only one in your country but it's like based on the average score of people in your country that could be that could be interesting uh okay explode an explosion tournament <laughs> yeah so definitely like i think the tournament is going to be the theme i can change my mind though you can't stop me this is my show but i think tournament's going to be the theme um and these are the ideas we need to incorporate okay Yeah, I think it'd be it could be something really dumb. It could be okay, but or just like not that complex. But basically, I could hook up to Twitch chat. Um, people can run a command that sets their country, and then we keep track of them by country, including United Kingdom and Netherlands, because we have quite a few people from there. And then we have some sort of like word game or something like that, where you have to say a word, and if it matches the dictionary of all these things, so we could have a dictionary of tacos. Um, here's the thing. Funny fun fact. Uh, bananas are actually radioactive. So maybe that has something to do with, ex we could have an explosion of bananas, um, but like, okay, how about this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, you choose your country and then um, in the chat, you have to say something in one of these categories, tacos, university, climbing. <laughs> Or I guess, I don't know, and we'll come up with like a dictionary for each of the things and we'll have a timer and then whoever, um, Whoever in the chat, okay, a food tournament? I guess we could, okay, here's the thing, yeah, because we do have banana and tacos and ketchup. Is there a taco, there, there should be a taco emote, right? There's a taco emote. Is there a banana emote? Yeah, but fun fact about bananas is so uh, there's a banana equivalent unit. So when people are talking about how radioactive something is, they actually talk about it in banana equivalent units. So this radioactive thing is equivalent to one crate of bananas. Uh, is there a, I guess there's a tomato. All right. Yeah, we should do, okay, we should do a tournament. We should do a food fight. Yeah. Okay, we should do a food fight. Um, all right. How are we going to incorporate university? Banana, yeah, oh, banana for scale. <laughs> How are we gonna incorporate climbing and dolphins? I think we're gonna do a food fight and then we could have, we could literally have an explosion of food. Okay, this makes sense. Like I said, I get to change my mind, but this is a tournament. It will be country based. So it's gonna be countries versus other countries. And then somehow we need to get emotes in the chat or uh, emojis in the chat that are food. And Maybe we could have like a, a bar chart that grows based on the number of food emojis for a given country. Um, and then if you do something wrong, you go to jail. <laughs> there could be dolphins that swoop in and eat the food. Okay. Um, knowledge equals university. So the team's knowledge is used to gain points. Okay. But yeah, how, how are we going to, I don't know. We need to get started coding because it's already been, how long has it been? Um, we have talked about this for, 
Wait, where's my thingy? <laughs> that's not bad. We've actually only been talking for five minutes. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, five minutes to come up with an idea. Dolphins like tacos. Avoid throwing <laughs> toy. Okay. I mean, I guess it could be it could be one country versus another. I don't know. We got We got to just get started coding. But I think this is the basis. It's a tournament. It's a game between countries. Right now, I'm just gonna build something that hooks up to Twitch chat where everyone can join a country. That's the first step. Let's just get that going. All right. So let's create a folder. Um, uh, do I need a folder? No, we don't. We're already in a folder. We're already in episode two. So I'm gonna create a file. Index.html. Um, basic HTML file. This is uh, food fight country edition. Um, so that's the app that we're building. We're going to add a nice little H1 right there. Um, hey, Josh Batch, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, should I use a style framework like Bootstrap or Bulma, or should I just write my styles, write the styles myself? I kind of want to use Bootstrap. I'm gonna use Bootstrap. I don't even care what you say. We're gonna we're gonna use Bootstrap. All right, so let's go to getbootstrap.com, um, and we're gonna get started. And I need a CDN. This is all I need. I just need the CSS. We'll use it. We'll use it somewhere. Cool. So that's fine. So we got the CSS. Um, we've got an H1. Um, that's fine. Oh, I could use Bootstrap five. You know, that's honestly though, that could just complicate things because it's still like in beta, isn't it? I'm not gonna use Bootstrap five. <laughs> All right, so we got Bootstrap. We have a title. Um, uh, I'll put like a little main tag with a container. Container. Uh, and then let's just start this up. So to start this, I'm just going to use light server. So no build process, just a simple little static app. We're going to serve up the static files. Food fight, country edition. Very nice. Um, and I guess we could do... Um, is there like a text center class in Bootstrap? Look at me, I can do it, okay. <laughs> so we, we've done it, we have a basic web page with a title. Uh, I, need to get, uh, I need to get the Twitch chat incorporated into this. So I'm gonna, for that, I'm gonna use TMIJS. Uh, this is a wonderful library for communicating with uh, Twitch chat. And um, it will just be, we'll just use a read-only connection. So uh, you can go to TMIJS.com, they have some examples, they show you how to install it, but this is kind of what I want. Just a, I just want to see the chats on the page, and then we can go from there. So let me create a little JavaScript file. Um, I guess I will use imports. We, we'll do modules. So uh, we'll say source equals app.js, and then we'll say type equals module. I realize, like, this is improv. We can still try to write good. We can still try to write good code. Um, but we're gonna have script type module, and then in here, uh, I'm just gonna log hello world. Hi, world. Um, and let's look at the console. Hi world. Okay. So it's connected. Now we want to do this. So, uh, we want to connect to Twitch, uh, secure connection. The channel we want is coding garden. Um, I'm going to go ahead and start parameterizing this. I, I feel like writing decent code today. So I'm going to, I'm going to get some URL params. So I'll say, uh, params equals new URL search params. And we're going to do uh, window.location.search. So when the page loads, hey, it's Commander Zach J. White. Thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Um, so uh, we're going to look at the params in the URL to get the channel name. Um, so we're going to say uh, channels is params.get channel or default to coding garden. Right? Or no. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine because for now it'll just work. But also, I need to actually bring in TMIJS. So uh, I copy and pasted the code, but I don't have it. Um, and I'm just going to grab that from GitHub. So if you go to the TMIJS GitHub, uh, and actually we'll leave the docs open. This is how you can find the docs. We'll leave that open for now. I don't think we're really going to need it. We really just need to listen for messages. Um, but let's also go grab the uh, library. This. Um, so the reason I'm going here is I actually don't know of a CDN that has a web enabled version. So I'm just going to go to releases. Also, um, there's like a more recent release with bug fixes. So I'm going to go to releases and then I'm just going to download the minified source code and just download it directly. Um, so let's save this. Doo -doo -doo -doo. <laughs> yeah, I feel like writing decent code today. <laughs> All right. 
Um, we're going to save this here. Coding Improv, Episode 2, TMI. Very good. <laughs> so <laughs> Cool. I've downloaded it locally, and now you can see I have tmi.min.js. So that's the actual TMI library. Um, and I guess, I mean, let's, let's try to do this. Let's import TMI from tmi.min.js. Will this work? I have no idea. Let's try it. Import not found default. Oh, uh, I guess it gets exported as TMI? This is not going to work. <laughs> I, there's probably a way to do it, uh, but that will not work for now. So I'm just going to add it in the in the HTML here. I don't feel like, look, there's probably a way to figure it out. I don't feel like figuring it out. Um, so uh, the source here is just going to be the tmi.min.js. Um, use require. I, the thing is, I don't know of a CDN that supports it in the browser. Import star. Okay, I'm going to try that. Actually, I'm going to try that. Import star as tmi from tmi. .min.js, an HTML programmer. Uh, TMI.client is not a constructor. Let's uh, something worked. Uh, let's see what we what, let's see what we get. No, you, so if you're doing mo uh, imports in the browser, you are required to have the .js. Oh, I, I messed up. Go back. Go back. 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 All right. Uh, it is an object, and it has a symbol type module. Can we just do dot module? Undefined. You definitely don't remove the new. All right, we're done. We're not, we're not going to import it. We're just going to do that, and it should work. So if people send messages in the chat, there we go. Hey, Jarrell, how's it going? <laughs> so it's connected. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I mean, this, this is like the, uh, the old way of doing it. Uh, you just add the script tag uh, to link to it. Like I mentioned, all of the CDNs that I know of don't have the browser, the one that works in the browser. So we're just going to do this. If we create other files, those we can use the modules for that. Okay, great. We have an app. We're listening for messages. Uh, now, let's go back to the README. What do we want to do? So this this is a game or a tournament of some kind. I'm not going to check that box just yet because we need to actually make it a game. And then we're going to incorporate these two suggestions by the fact that in the chat, you can set your, your country. Um, and so let's, let's just think about what you'll do in the chat. So I think in the chat... Um, You'll say something like, uh, join team, and then you'll do like your two character country code, something like that. That puts you on the team, and we can have a list of all the countries and all the teams. Um, and then where do we go from there? I have no idea. I have no idea, but let's get this working. Uh, and I think for this, I want to use the uh, uh, rest countries API. Yeah, I realize you're trying to be helpful, FV, but we got to keep moving. We got to, this is improv. We got to, no stop. Okay, so um, let's get all of the countries. And I think, yeah, yeah, we can get the list of country codes. Look at this. All right, try again. So, um, oh, that's specific country codes. I think we can... We can filter, um, we can use flag emojis. Well, we could potentially use the same thing I'm using in the overlay. So there's actually a CSS library to get the flags. Well, we will do that, but what I want, I want to validate the country code by first getting all of the country data. Uh, all right, filter response, here we go. The fields that we want are really just the two character country code and the name. Um, so here's the API. We call, we want the, the fields we want are name and uh, alpha, two code and alpha three code and alternate spellings bad request okay <laughs> i'll figure this out um fields equal name separated by semicolons i mean can we at least get the name in the alpha two code v2 slash Oh, not alpha. That's why. Okay. So let's try this again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of alpha, this should be all. Well, it's not, it's not a typo. It's just a different endpoint. 
There we go. So now we get back the name, the alpha three code, and the alternate spellings. Uh, we'll also get back the alpha. Wait, where's the alpha two code? Did I spell? Alpha. Al okay. Alpha. You're right. That was misspelled. <laughs> there we go. So we're gonna. We're basically when the app spins up, we're gonna make a request to this API, uh, which has uh, a bunch of countries. I think it has all of them. Not not all of them, but a lot of them. <laughs> from uh, Afghanistan all the way up to Zimbabwe. And we'll, um, we'll use this to validate when people say that they're coming from a specific country. So um, let's do this. Um, again, I feel like writing decent code today. So we're actually gonna create a folder. We're gonna call this source. We're actually, and then um, we're gonna move our files in there. So app goes in there and TMI that goes in there. Um, and then index.html we need to update. So this actually needs to be source slash that. This will be source slash that. Um, that should be fine. And then in here, I'm gonna create a new file called like uh, get countries.js. And this is a function called get countries. Um, that's gonna make the API request. So we're gonna make this an async function. We have a URL that's equal to that. Um, and then we make the request. And for this, we'll just use what's built into the browser. So we're gonna use uh, fetch to that specific URL. Um, that is gonna give us back um, a blob. Well, not a blob. Yeah, a blob. Is it a blob? <laughs> well, we want to turn that blob into uh, JSON. So we say response.json. And then um, we are just going to return that JSON. And it should be an array. Um, yeah, it's going to be this array. I guess technically we could go ahead and turn it into a set where the keys are these things like name, alpha two code, alpha three code, alternate spellings. Um, or we, we just turn, let's turn it into a set. Because basically, when someone joins a team, we want to make sure that it is a valid country. Okay, so um, let's let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and reformat it. So let's say um, uh, valid country countries is just going to be this. We're going to um, reduce it into an array of uh, valid countries, and then we get each individual country. Uh, this reduce starts as an empty array. On each call of the reducer, we return the valid array. And uh, before that, actually, we could return the valid array concat with uh, country dot all these things, name, alpha two code, and then alternate spellings. Hey, live coding. <laughs> so um, we want country dot name. We want uh, country dot alpha two code. I mean, there's probably a better way to do this, but we're just gonna do this. Actually, you know, I feel like being fancy. Here we go, are you ready? Editing with CJ. We're going to use this selector to go there. Uh, we're then going to, well, actually, I don't think I can go that far. We're gonna just do these first three. <laughs> um, so this is a name. We wanna get rid of the rest of it. The first part here, we wanna say uh, concat, and this will be a country dot. And then we want a dot on the end of it. So that's not bad. It's not bad. <laughs> and then we'll do the same thing with alternate, alternate spellings um, like this. Um, yeah, this is it. This is exactly what we wanted. It's going to work on the first try. Yeah, focus mode's done. I want to I get this working, and then I'll talk to chat, because I realize people have been saying things. <laughs> um. Oh, that is wrong. Let's put the periods on this side. <laughs> oh, we'll get there. We'll get there, everybody. Bear with me. Okay. So, valid is an array. And we want to take the name, the alpha 2 code, the alpha 3 code, and all the alternate spellings and concatenate it onto that array. So this is going to give us an array of all possible countries. And then we're going to turn that into a set. So I'm just going to say return a new set with valid countries. Now this should give us um, a data structure where it only has unique values. So it only has unique um, names, alpha codes, and alternate spellings. Um, actually, no. We need we need to we need to group it. I'm sorry. It can't it can't just be um, can't just be that. Um, actually, we'll return both. So we'll have valid countries, but we'll also have um, the specific alpha two codes. Hey, <laughs> that's one good reason. So actually, let's just let's just make sure this is working. Let's not get too far. Let's make sure this works. Um, so we're going to use that in here. Um, 
I think we can do client.connect and then. So that way this gives us access to um, after we're connected. Actually, no, let's do this. Uh, let's get the countries. After we've retrieved the countries, then we'll connect to Twitch chat. So in this file, I'm going to import in uh, the get countries function from the get countries.js file. Why not use the spread operator versus concat? Uh, this looks nicer to me. They both will work. They both do exactly the same thing. Um, well, not exactly. In this scenario, they would do the same thing. So get the countries. And then we have the uh, valid countries. And then we're going to do all of our stuff once we have the countries. So we're going to put that inside of here. Um, and we'll just log valid countries. So when the page spins up, if I've done this correctly, um, we will have a set with a bunch of country names inside of it. Uh, who thinks it's going to work in the first try? Place your bets now. Any takers? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, sky color. That's how. That's how we're going to do it from there. One. All right. Will it work? <clears throat> Import not found. Okay. <laughs> It'll work. No, no. I forgot to export this function. Um, so we're going to do export default. Here we go. This will work. Hey, 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 cool. So we have a set with uh, 1,255 entries. Um, and that is all of the, the things, the, the possible things that people can say. So that's great. Test fail, test pass. Um, so now we actually want to group these by the two character country code because we're going to use that to show the country flag. Let's look at, um, there's like country flag CSS library, flag icon CSS, that's the one. We've used this before. Basically, it's what we're using in the overlay here. Um, and so this takes in a alpha two code. So that's what I want. So basically, um, <clears throat> we still want the list of all valid countries because it'll be really easy to just look up and make sure that it is a valid country, but we want to group valid countries by two character country code. Um, so let's do this. We're going to reduce, we're going to have valid be an array and we're going to have uh, countries um, be an, I guess it could be a map. Like I said, I'm feeling fancy today. We're going to create a map. <laughs> so, um, what we'll actually say is we, we need to return, um, I guess we'll call this data. This is our reducer. So we'll say uh, data.valid equals data.valid.concat, all these things. We're going to return data. And uh, we what we want to say is, um, actually, no, we we need we need the opposite. We need a, yeah, yeah, so we, we need a, all of these things need to return the two character country code. So we really need to say data.countries at all of these things. Here we go. Let's call this items. We're going to reuse it. So items starts off as an array with just the country name in it. And we're going to put all these things inside of it. Is everyone following me? Who's following? <laughs> so we have an array of countries. Uh, now we can simply just say concat here. That's easy. But what I want to do is I want to iterate over items. So items, um, and really we'll just, for, we'll just for each it. And so for each item, we want to say uh, data.countries uh, dot set add. How does, how does a map work? Add. I'm lost. I'll show you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. It's all gonna be very, very, very clear very soon. Is it map dot set? Someone tell me. What's the what's the what's the method that I need? Set. So we're gonna set the map with the alpha two. Oh no no no. We need the opposite. So we want the item, and that should return the alpha two code. Cool. So, uh, or country dot alpha two code. So what we're gonna get now? So first of all, we have we're gonna have a giant set of all the valid country names easy so we can easily we can easily just actually we don't even need valid anymore we just need the map or do we yeah 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 we just need the map we just need the map <laughs> um and we'll just call this map country map 
That's literally all we need. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm overcomplicating this. Oh, I got rid of the items. Don't get rid of the items. We need the items. We need the items. We just don't need this. Yeah, we just need the map. Okay. We'll get there. Give me a second. We'll get there. Um, so we'll say uh, country map dot set, and then we'll return it. And then country map is here. And then actually, we're actually just reducing to the set here. This is all going to make sense very soon. And I'll go back and explain it because there's a lot happening here. Um, and actually, then we just return this. Look at me. I can JavaScript. All right. First try. Ta-da! Okay, so it, this gives us a map, and basically this map um, will... Uh, so we have all the valid things, like Afghanistan, AF, AFG, Afghanistan, and that spelling, um, but they all map to the two-character country code. Right? Right? So now we have this giant object. Uh, it's, this is not a golf. No, I would, I would write this code in production. Who would not write this code in production? Maybe I might change something. <laughs> um, yeah, so see, you're right. So we get a map of um, so we get a map of all the va all of the countries, and then that maps to a two character country code. So, but I mean, I guess the other thing is, I kind of want to go back. <laughs> me, me. <laughs> um, oh, you're right. Actually, yeah, you're right. We should do either two uppercase or two lowercase. That way, it doesn't matter the spelling. So actually, I'm gonna do a two lowercase. So whatever people type in the chat, we can still look it up regardless of how they spelled it. Um, haters wouldn't, the haters. <laughs> but actually what, what it reminds me of is I want to look up that gives me, that goes from two character country code to the actual country name. So that way we can show the country name. Yeah. <sighs> I'm gonna do this. <clears throat> So this will this will be data dot map, and then this will be data, and then we'll say um, data dot by or data dot name or country name <laughs> um, dot set. Okay, this all makes sense in a second. Give me a second. This all give me a second. <laughs> Alpha two code with country dot name. Cool. All right. What this is going to allow us to do is to actually show it um, in the UI. So name is a new map as well. So name is a map that goes from the two character country code to the human readable name. And then this is a map that goes from anything that any user could possibly type in to the two character country code. So first we'll validate that it's in here and then we'll use that two character country code to get the country name. All right. <clears throat> this should do it. And then uh, we'll put it in the page. So right now it's just it's just data. All right. So we have this map. So actually, there's only 250 countries in here. That's not a lot, or is it? How many countries are there? <laughs> but what this does is it it gives us the two character country code to the actual name of the place. Right. All right. Whew. There are 204 countries. <laughs> Sounds about right. All right. <clears throat> Great. Great work, everyone. We've made it this far. So uh, we have the list of valid countries. This is actually going to give us uh, those two things. So what we want to do is when someone sends a message to join the team, depends on who you ask, <laughs> 195. Um, when someone sends a message, uh, we want to um, join them to a specific team. So um, we'll have something like uh, teams, and that's also going to be a map. <clears throat> That'll be a map that goes from uh, country code to potentially an array of objects of all the team members. There's more countries in your JavaScript than in the real world. <laughs> well, okay. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, so we have teams. All right. Now, um, we basically want to, if someone does the join team command, so I'm going to create a little command handler. So I'll say um, um, if message dot starts with if it does not start with that return we only care about message that starts with an exclamation mark actually yeah, yeah. okay and then um we're going to break it apart so we'll say um oh the two digits were not, oh you're right i need to lowercase them in both in, in both places right here like that Okay, um, so we're gonna have the uh, the arguments, which is just gonna be uh, message dot split 
on a space. So when someone sends a message, we're going to split it on a space. We'll log it to the console. Will this be GDPR compliant? It's not going to have, I mean, it'll have your chat data, but it's ephemeral. The moment you refresh the page, all the data will, will be gone. We're not storing it in a database. Yeah, it's probably true, Effie. That makes sense. Uh, okay, so split it on there. Uh, the command itself is going to be args at uh, zero, which is args dot shift. Removes the first element from an array and returns it. So if somebody says exclamation mark join team US, shift is going to give us this command here, join team. Um, and then we'll say, um, well, we want to also slice that at one. So that will remove the exclamation mark, and that will just give us join team. And so then... We could do something like um, if uh, command handlers dot has that specific command, then we'll do um, let's do this. We'll say command handler 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 <laughs> uh, command handler han. I can do this handler equals command handlers, which doesn't exist yet. We're going to create that dot get with this specific command, right? And then we'll say, if command handler is a thing, then we're going to say command handler dot uh, handler. <laughs> we're going to invoke it with all of these, uh, I guess, all of these same arguments. Probably an object that has these. So an object with, the ch well, we don't need the channel. We do need the tags. We'll take in the message. That's pretty much all we need. All right, great. Uh, command handlers is not a thing. This is also going to be a map. And for now, I'm just going to write it in line, but then we can move it to a separate file. But I could say command handlers dot set. Uh, we want the join team command. This is going to be a function that takes in uh, the, let's call it info. That's going to have tags and message. Um, and then we can just log info dot message. Cool. Info dot yeah, it's, it's great. It should work. Um, I'll mention really quick, if you're writing Twitch bots, typically you want to do something like this. So if the message came from the bot itself, just return. In this case, our bot is read only, so we don't really need that. We got a whole lot of maps. A whole lot of maps. Command handler is supposed to be singular. Well, it's a list of command handlers. So we're going to have like join team. We're also going to have like, um, uh, food or like throw food. Um, we're also going to have, uh, what else? Um, deploy dolphin. <laughs> what other commands are we going to have? Um, we'll have like a uh, climb wall or something like that. Uh, command handlers dot climb wall. Right. What else? Um, explode. <laughs> Right, so this this is basically what what this how this is gonna work. Like, uh, or I, I like nuke. Yeah, we'll do nuke because nuke, uh, we mentioned it earlier, has to do with uh, the radioactive units in bananas. Squirt ketchup. Well, I think we're just gonna include these. These are the foods that you get to fight with: tacos, bananas, and ketchup. Attend university. Oh yeah, I like that. If you do t attend university, that will potentially increase your. Um, uh, I don't know your knowledge by a certain amount. So, or maybe it increases your ac accuracy. Attend uni. We'll do that. Attend uni. Um, all right, great. Uh, I think the other thing we want in here is actually the command as well. Um, because now that we pass that in, in all of these, we can log the command and the message itself. Um, and actually, uh, info.tags contains the user information. Um, I think it's just tags.username. You can do something like this, uh, info.tags.username. This should work. Should be fine. My my chat overlay just died again. I can't believe this is happening. <laughs> Why is this happening? Are there too many chat messages? I can't believe it. Well, all right, it's fine. Did anybody see, like, any weirdly crafted message payload? Like, are people messing with me? <laughs> F for the overlay. <laughs> nope. It's probably just out of memory. I'll debug it later. Okay. F. Nothing weird in the chat? All right. 
I do have a lot of things open. <laughs> no, like I, nobody ever said it was production ready. Nobody ever said it. Okay. Um, so that should be fine. Now, what should happen is in the chat, we're going to be listening for uh, messages that start with an exclamation mark. Um, if it does, then we're going to grab the command um, from that. And then we're going to invoke our command handler. So if you in the chat, if you say exclamation mark join team or exclamation mark throw food or exclamation mark deploy dolphin or exclamation mark uh, climb well wall or exclamation mark nuke or exclamation mark attenue. If you do any of these things, it should at least log it in the console. Let's see. It broke. Command handler dot handlers. Oh, you're right. So uh, down here, I expected it to be an object with a handler property, but it's not. It's literally just a function. I think that's fine. That's fine for now. Like we could add like if it was a handler, then we could have like aliases. There we go. So now we get. Um, oh, and I guess the message actually needs to be args dot join. Yeah. So oh, actually, we have message, and then we we should also pass in, pass in args, and then that allows us to do instead of info, we could do info dot args dot join uh, on a space, and that will log the specific message that the user sent, not the command itself. So now we should see um, if you do any of those commands. Yeah. So we have the username, we have the command that they ran, and then we have their specific message. Empty string. <laughs> Very cool. All right. Whew. Right. We're getting things done. So um, basically, at this point, we got to make a game. <laughs> at, this game at this point, we have a command handler. Uh, we've have, we've gotten 41 followers. Thank you, everyone, for all the followers. I, I apologize that I'm not able to uh, acknowledge each and every one because uh, we got to get coding. Join team undefined. You know what it could be? It could be that my overlay is... It can't handle so many commands being sent. I don't know. Hey, more follows. I appreciate you. <laughs> Drop database. Object, object. Okay. Uh, let's just get the uh, join team command working. So, um, and actually, we could write this in a separate file. Here's the point where I decide to write, start writing less good code <laughs> because we're in a hurry. Um, we're in a hurry, so I'm just going to do what I can do. So, um, at this point, we have uh, valid countries. Um, and so when somebody says join team, I'm going to say if uh, valid countries dot has, has, um, how do I get JS doc right here? Is it like this? No, no, no. Anybody know the shortcut? To generate generate JS doc. Hey Hokey. <laughs> Thanks for the cross site scripting. We appreciate you. Slash star star tab. Okay. If I do slash star star tab, no, I didn't okay. Oh well. I was just trying to add the fact I was gonna tell um uh, I was gonna tell JS doc. Well, oh well. I was gonna tell JS doc that valid countries is actually an object that has two properties. So I think it'll be uh, valid countries dot map. So if valid countries dot map, yeah, it, for whatever reason it couldn't auto generate it on like an anonymous function. But valid countries dot map dot has um, this. Yeah, and somebody mentioned de mentioned destructuring. I'm about it. Let's destructure it. So we actually want. Um, Potentially we want the tags and potentially we want the username. Um, and then we also want, we actually don't even need the command because at this point, yeah. Uh, and then we could also grab the args. And then from those args, we get the country. So I'm gonna remove any extra space around it. So we'll just do args.join. Um, and then we'll say, if valid countries has this country, then we're going to add them to it. So we have teams. So um, we'll say country code is valid countries dot name, names. What did I call this? Let's call this names. 
I like it, I like it better. We'll call it names. So if valid country, valid countries dot names dot get, uh, how did I do this? Wait. <laughs> What's up, development issue? Oh yeah, two lowercase. Thank you very much. That that should do it too. Uh, so it's trim it. Well, two lowercase. Trim it and then two lowercase. Um. So. If it had, I don't even remember what this object looked like. Okay, <laughs> we're, we're still logging it. Let's look at it. So, um, cannot access property set. Data.name is undefined. Names. Names. Easy. Easy fix. All right. So, names takes the two-character country code. Oh, 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 oh. The map gives us back the two-character country code. Okay. I forgot. Okay. <laughs> and we actually should put it as two lowercase. So we'll do alpha two code dot uh, two lowercase. The LEDs are shaking, probably because my table is moving. Okay, so the map gives us back the two character country code. So we'll say uh, country code, country code, take me home. Um, that equals get, get that specific country. So if the country code is a thing, we have it, and then we'll, we're going to get the country name, which is going to be uh, valid countries dot names dot get this specific country code and then we're just gonna log uh, username and country name <laughs> country code country code <laughs> all right this should do it so now in the chat if you type exclamation mark join team followed by a two character country code or anything else here's hokey they're on Team Germany, in White Legend, on Team France, in Terrazone, in Ukraine, in Awaited, in the Netherlands, in Sequel Gordster, in Canada, in Sightseer, in the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and Northern Ireland. <laughs> so this is great. It's working. It's working, everyone. It's working. Um, furious type. <laughs> but now, now we want to, um, um, we want to add, we want to add them. Nuke empty string. Oh, that's uh, that's the other the other command handlers. <laughs> okay, so we have this map of teams. Um, I think we're just gonna map it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So we're, okay, here we're gonna, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna say um, uh, team equals um, teams dot get with the country code. So we're gonna put it by the country code. We'll say if the team was not defined, then we're gonna put it in there. <laughs> So if the team was not defined, we'll say uh, teams.set uh, with that specific country code. It's going to be an object that has the, uh, the code, the name, and then uh, team members. And members also is, I guess, going to be a map because each team member could have a state, I guess. <laughs> We're using a whole lot of maps today. The theme is maps. Maps. Um, so, uh, set that country code to be this object. And th so if it wasn't there, we add it and then, um, we'll reassign it. This is the team. Why a map and not objects? It's cause it's just the right thing to do. Um, maps don't have the issue of, um, uh, potential prototype pollution or like accessing properties that are not top level properties on that specific thing and maps can have uh lookups that are not just strings they can have you can have number lookups or other types um okay so grab the team if it doesn't exist we're going to create that team put it in our teams and then we're going to say uh uh team yeah join team constructor exactly if you used an object people could join the team the constructor because it's technically a property on the object um okay so we're going to say um team dot members dot push and this is going to be an, um, well, actually not push. It's a, it's an, it's a map. We're going to say team.members.set username to be a nice little object. I don't know. Do individual users have scores? I guess everyone on the team score starts off at zero. I think that's what we're going to do because we want potential, like equal representation. Like even though there are some, there will be more people from one country versus another country. Um, we want their score to be averaged out over each other. So we'll set the score to zero, and that way we can average the score for all the members of the team. Okay, so score is zero. Um, what else? What else do we need about? Um, 
Oh, so uh, I, 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 I'm basically taking care of that right here because, oh, you're right. You're right. Somebody could, could try to join two different teams. Oh, we don't want that. Oh, so much, so much codes, so much codes we have to write. <laughs> Um, so I'm just going to say um, uh, user by team. And this is also going to be a map. <laughs> and we're going to say uh, after they join the team, we're going to set them. Um, we're going to say and actually we'll, we'll throw the username on there too. Um, so this is the user like that. And then we'll say... Um, user by team and the team that we're going to set is the country code and that specific user and so now that we've done this before we add them before we add them uh, we're going to say um you, you can only join a team once and you can't change teams um so we're going to say um if the country code exists and user by team dot has username so before we let you join a team we'll make sure that you're not already in a team and here is where we're setting you oh no, no no user user by team wait what no 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 we just need all of the users basically all of the users that have joined so far that's it that's all we'll do um so users by username is what we'll call this. And we're going to put the username and the user. Um, and that that way, um, it's just top level. And we don't have to search into each individual team. We're just going to keep track of all of them. Um, so if users by team does not, or users by username does not have that specific username, we'll let them join. Um, and then we're just going to log uh, username joined. Um, and then we'll do the country name, like that. All right, what if a user moved to another country? We're not gonna allow it. <laughs> Once you join a team, you must stay on that team. So uh, look, it works. Haha, -ha, this is empty. Hey, oh no, oh. <laughs> if people are running other commands right now. <laughs> but it works, it works. Okay, let's actually show this data on the page. So uh, for that, I'm gonna use Vue.js. You can't stop me. Try, try stop me. Try stop me from using Vue.js. Uh, but I, but basically what I want is I want to get the people separated by teams on the page itself. Um, so we're going to go to unpackage. We're going to grab view. Um, that sounds unconstitutional. <laughs> uh, we're going to go in. We're going to grab the browser version, ESM, ES module of the browser. Yeah. Oh, no, we grabbed it from the REST APIs here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, single cores. I see. Yeah, that was purely for demonstration purposes. Uh, you're talking about the um, the scraping video that I did. Yeah, yeah. I like there are a ton of APIs out there. I realized that. Uh, I did not want to scrape any website that could potentially get mad at me for scraping them, which is why we scraped Wikipedia. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and import view from that thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. No worries, single cores. Thank you. For, thank you for asking. Um, and then we're gonna we're gonna create a view app, I guess. Now all of this data should probably be inside the view app. Oh, okay. Let's. <laughs> the main reason I'm gonna use view is it's gonna be like once I get it set up, it'll be super simple to just show the teams on the page. So let's do it. So I'm gonna create a new view instance. Um, I need to put it on a specific element. So uh, let's give this an ID of app, like that. And then over here, we'll say the element is ID app. Um, and then this is going to have some data and this data is basically all of these properties that I've been creating. So command handlers, users by username. Actually, I guess command handlers could technically be methods, I guess. <laughs> but basically what I want is I want to take all of these and I want to put them as data available to view. So we're going to have, um, teams which starts off as a map um we have users by username which starts off as a map why is this complaining do not use view for side effect there we go app is declared but i've never read stop it stop it yes lint 
<laughs> Stop it. Okay, so we have teams, users by username, and command handlers. Um, and then we're going to get rid of all of these. Those don't exist anymore. Um, and then also we're probably going to have valid countries on our data here. Valid countries starts off as an object that has names, which is a new map. And um, what else did we have? Names and the map itself, which is also a new map. We have so, look at all these maps. <laughs> okay, great. So this is the data inside of view. Uh, and then whenever the component is created is whenever we want to do all of this fun stuff that we've been doing. Um, so uh, we'll do the, the get countries and then basically all of this. We're gonna move all of this inside of our view app. Maps on maps on maps on maps. Um, Okay, um, so, well, let me just, can I do that? Great. So uh, client, we should define all of this at the top of the file before our view app, right here. Uh, and then inside of view, instead of doing, uh, so this will just say this dot valid countries equals valid countries. Great, because the this here is now referring to the data. And so now all these places where the variables are not defined, we actually just need to say this. This dot. This dot. This dot. Create a map to map your map maps to the other maps. <laughs> this dot. Um, this dot. This dot. This dot. This dot. <laughs> this dot. This dot. Uh, and then this dot. Great. Uh, all right, for now, I'm going to comment out all these other command handlers because, I mean, honestly, I've been coding for a long time and we don't really even have anything on the page. This has been fun, though. <laughs> Imagine dotting everything. Right. This should be fine. This is just going to work. All right, so now we're inside of a view app. There should be literally nothing different except maybe some errors in the console. But if you try to join a team, um, destructure this? Yeah, that would make sense. Are people trying to join teams right now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it still works. But now, now that the data is on view, it's going to be really easy to um, to show it on the page. So first of all, I just want to show all of the countries uh, that have joined. Um, so we're going to just um, iterate over uh, teams and show each of the, the team names uh, in our HTML. So um, we'll have a nice little div right here. And then uh, for now, we'll just repeat a span. We'll, we'll come up with some better stylings, but we basically want to repeat this for every uh, team in teams. And then I think we should be able to do team.name. Something like that. With that. All right, try again. Join a team and it should pop up on the page. It didn't work. <laughs> it did not work. Uh, I'm going to look in the console to see if it actually is repeating. Um, no, we just have a div. Okay. Add a counter of people. Yeah, I, I think I'll, that I can make that. I can do that too because I have the users object. Um, did I call it teams? What did I call it? Yeah, 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 it is teams. Though technically it's a map. So do I need to do, um, yeah, do I need to turn it into an array? Oh, buddy. I kind of just want the entries. I have an idea. Computed properties. <laughs> um, so we'll just do, uh, we have a computed property called uh, all teams. And this is just a function that returns the entries. Uh, This.teams.entries? Yeah, and so uh, the cool thing about computed properties is this will only rerun to grab all of the entries if the teams the teams change. So now we have all teams. Let's save that, and then we'll repeat over it here. And then each team should have a name. All right, join a team. <laughs> it's not working. Uh, do I have the view dev tools? I don't. Let me install the view dev tools. Will that work for a uh, key value of? Oh, I don't. Want, you're right. I don't want entries. I want values. I want values because I want the object itself. We'll get there, everybody. We'll get there. Just hang in. Hang in there. <laughs> hang in. <laughs> um, right here. Oh, 
We saw something for a split second. Um, I need the view dev tools. For whatever reason, I don't have it. No view dev tools? <laughs> yeah, I don't even know what went wrong. Uh, get the Firefox add-on. Oh, I do have it. Oh, it's not being detected because it's a CDN, possibly. Welp. This is the point in the show where we just give up. No, no. <laughs> I'm going to keep going. I at least want to show the teams on the page. Um, just a second. Cool. Um, I'm, I'm very curious. <laughs> Let's just grab the values right here and see if this is getting updated. Um, it's a map iterator. Oh, oh, I, I don't need, I don't want the iter, I literally have to turn it into an array. I can't use the iterator. Yeah, I need it to be an array. Okay. Um, but the teams are not changing. So this is dependent on this dot teams. Everything will be okay. You're right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, oh, view is not keeping track of when maps change. I've, li I've literally never done this. <laughs> I usually use objects. And so view doesn't know when we set or get. Yeah. View does not know when we set or get things on the on the object. Dang. Yeah, we could use view.set, but does that work in the same way? Time for Vuex. <laughs> yeah, we no, we absolutely could. We absolutely could. Um, but my my computer so here's this is actually good and bad. So for one, my computed property is not rerunning because it does not detect a change on teams, right? So whenever, right now, whenever we do teams.set, that means we're adding a new team to that map. But um, uh, Vue.js doesn't know when this happens. Yeah, this is the latest view. Let me see really quick. Vue.js uh, map get set. Does view support reactivity on a map and set? This feature ticket has some discussion, okay. Uh, as far as I know, views reactivity tracks assignments. If you perform an assignment on your set, it should reactivity should track reactivity. Yeah, so I'm familiar with this, but a a map technically you're not setting a property. You're setting an an internal thing that that does it. And so this is typically for setting properties on an object. And I don't think I can do that. Um, so what if I did this? <laughs> what if I said uh, this dot teams equals this dot teams? Just reassign it to itself. This is what you do in Svelte, by the way, for like arrays and stuff like that. All right, join a team. Well, my friends, this is the point in the show where we no longer use maps. <laughs> we no longer use maps. It won't work. <laughs> We're just going to use, I mean, it'll be easy enough to do objects. Um, nope. Uh, yeah, it's, it's Twitch API is super easy. That's probably the easiest thing we did today. Uh, I am not a robot. No maps. Uh, here's, honestly, check it. I have an idea. I have an idea. <laughs> Watch me. All right, we're going to implement our own map right now. Right now, we're going to implement a map. So um, we'll have this class map. Um, this is technically going to overwrite the built-in map. Uh, it has a set and it has a get. Um, and so we set with a prop name. Oh, well, thank you, Pratik. <laughs> and we get with a uh, prop name. And then uh, the constructor just sets the internal. Yeah, we're going to rebuild the wheel. We're going to start. So this dot data is just is actually going to be an object like this, right? And then whenever we set it, we'll just do a view dot set this dot data with the prop name, and then the value that you pass in. Prop and value, and so this will tell view that things have changed, um, and then this will just do. Um, 
um, get prop name. What's the check? What's the check to see if the prop name is valid? Uh, okay, yeah, let's change just the prop. Like, what's the check? Uh, you could do in, but I don't want it. I only wanted to do innumerable properties. Like, I want to prevent like people getting constructor and stuff like that. So let's say like if prop in this dot data return this dot data at prop. I guess it is has own property. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, it's going to return undefined. Um, so let's do this. And then the other thing that you typically do is you say like object dot prototype dot has own property because you could run into a scenario where somebody overwrites has own property. So now we're being sure we're sure to call the actual has own property. We're going to call that on uh, this dot data. Uh, and then the argument is prop like that. So if this dot data has the prop, then we're going to return it. Uh, but when we set it, we set it. It's going to work. First try. First try. Um, dot values is not a function. Um, and actually, now that we're doing this, I don't have to do this anymore because... Wait. No, 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 no. It is a map. Okay. Uh, we could just do dot data. <laughs> we could access the data property. Um, yeah, I don't think we even... We don't even... Watch this. We don't even need a computed property anymore. Um, now... I will just say uh, teams dot data. Join a team. Oh well, we broke it. <laughs> this dot users by username dot has is not a function. Oh, I, I totally forgot. So we have uh, get, we have set, we also need has. Um, so has is very simple as well. Um, prop. And then we just do this. I mean, we could reuse it, but it, this is fine. This is all we need. Third try. <laughs> Ta -da! Da -da 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 -da! <laughs> oh, buddy, we just re-implemented a map so that that Vue.js can listen to the reactivity. Third, first try. <laughs> Despat, look, look, we have all the country names. <laughs> Beautiful. Look at all the countries. Look at all the countries. <laughs> what I think is hilarious is we've been co we've been coding for like an hour at this point. This is the first time we actually get something on the on the page. Ship it. All right. At this point, let's just show the country flags. I, I mentioned this this CSS library. Uh, let's use it. Is there a CDN? Oh, thank you, me, not Santa. <laughs> Hey, uh, Prodigimix, thank you for the 100 bits. Um, do we have uh, JS deliver? Uh, GitHub. Okay. So we want... Wait, do they not... Assets? Hello, Eddie. Welcome to the show. Um, you know what? I've done this before. Sprout Kit. I, I created documentation on how to add country flags. Uh, well, there's font awesome. Here it is. It's on Cloudflare. There we go. So um, this is going to give us uh, the country flag CSS. So I'm just going to add this to the page. Pat myself on the back. Thank you, past CJ. We knew you would need it. So now that we have that, uh, we can actually use this library which lets you just do a span with the country icon like that. And actually, I think we'll do this because it'll be a square. We want it to be a square, I guess. And so um, not only are we going to show the team name, we're also going to show this team flag. Let's do this. Um, so we show the flag and then the name and then that. Pass CJ, heart. <laughs> but we need a dynamic... Uh, uh, CSS class, right? Uh, so we, we actually need um, uh, to bind the class to be a dynamic CSS thing. So I'll say bind the class to be an object, right? Where we grab the specific country code, um, like so. Watch me. First try, first try. Are you ready, everyone? First try. So we want this 
this property here. And actually, I guess, do we need brackets for computed properties? Yeah, I think we will. We will. Because we're, we're going to need brackets. And we're going to um, apply this class. Yes. But what's dynamic is this part right here. Because that is team.code. Like that. All right. Let's see some country flags. Here we go. Nice. <laughs> First try. <laughs> First try. First try. <laughs> oh, I'm proud. Of, look, look at this. If this is all we build today, it's actually pretty cool. Um, but let's go. <laughs> let's let's think back to the point. The point of being here was to ultimately create a tournament. I got I got so lost in doing other things, but let's see what we've done so far. At least, like, let's say we've at least done these ideas, right? You can at least join a team. Oh, we can show the team. Yeah, that's actually, that would be easy enough to do. Um, we actually can say, um, well, because, yeah, we are creating maps. So we could, so we could do members. Member count? Sort by team size. Yeah. I don't know, but we did that. Uh, we don't have explosions. We don't have foods yet. Uh, this is technically a tournament because everybody in Twitch chat is joining things. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I can't add, I'll, I'll add a counter really quick. So basically for each team, uh, we can, whenever somebody joins a team, we'll say like team dot um, length, the length of the team count. Number of people? All right, see you later, NJ Berman. Thank you for being here. I like count. Count is easy enough. And I'll just do a team.members.data um, object.keys.length. That should work. So that gives us the count. And then now in the CSS, we'll do the team name. And then surrounded by parentheses, we're going to put the count. All right, first try. In this scenario where you've over overrided map, how would you actually use the built-in map? Um, I would call call my map something different. It's it's absolutely a bad practice to overwrite something existing. Um, you sh I should call it like coding garden map or something like that. There are people from all over. This is great. Look at this. Look at this. <laughs> Yeah, this is the tournament. <laughs> you just need to have your have your team. The team with the most members wins. Oh, here's the other thing. We could actually sort by team count. Yeah, let's sort. Let's actually sort by team count. This will be fun. We could do a computed property of teams sorted by count. I don't know. Yeah, yeah let's sort it by count, just because. Because why not? So this is definitely the use case for a computed property. Uh, computed. And this is uh, teams by count. And this is a function that grabs the teams, which is going to be uh, object dot values of this dot teams, because um, that's going to give us all the actual team objects. And then, um, uh, and actually, we just need to sort it. So uh, this gives us an array, and it's a new array every time. So we we can we can call sort, which actually modifies the array, which is fine. Not shadow root. What are you what are you what are you doing? Dot sort. Uh, we get a and b. And we just want to do a dot count minus b dot count, and that should order by the number. Because computed properties are cool. Yeah, they are. <laughs> now all we need is, all we need is love. That's really all we need. <laughs> yeah. So we can see uh, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland is in the lead with three people. France with two people. Th France has just tied the UK with three people. Denmark still at one. This is not working. This is not working. <laughs> You can see that uh, this is this is not working at all. Uh, <laughs> it's oh, 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 I know. Who can tell me why it's not working? It's actually very simple why it's not working. First person to tell me why it's not working will get a gifted sub. Have you been paying attention? Canada is not sorted right. No, they're not. A lot of them are not sorted right. We have thirteen from the from the U.S.
didn't call it. Be more specific. I'm not using the new property. Yes. All right, Ben, choose one person that's not a sub, and I will give them a sub. Um, but yeah, that's it. So, so I created I created the computed property teams by count, uh, but we're not actually using it in my template. It's this is still just teams dot data. Oh, this is gonna break. So I need to do that, and then this actually needs to be uh, this dot teams dot data. All right, save that. Save that. Now. Now it should order by count. Uh, and Ben, 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 Ben. Um, was it Ben? Ben, right? Uh, who who do you want me to give the sub to? Oh, now it's in reverse order. <laughs> we'll fix that. We'll fix that. I need to see a message from Ben. Uh, because there is a bug. Mm. Yeah, we'll we'll reverse the count. <laughs> We will, but Ben, tell me who you want to who you want to gift, who you want me to gift. Um, but yeah, 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 that's that's actually what we need to do. So this is actually sorting least or uh, least to greatest. We want greatest to least. Nice. Spray the bug. <laughs> Pick a random, oh, a non sub. It has to be a non sub person. Okay. Uh, the first non-sub to tell me the name of the VS Code theme that I use will get get a sub from me. Uh, what is this theme? What theme am I using? Who can tell me? And also, extra, um, <laughs> include in your answer where the, the answer can be found. Infi, you're already a sub. You're <laughs> but the green Zhas has it. Uh, I'll go ahead and give it to the green Zhas. Um, man, why is my overlay so slow? I mean, I know why, because I wrote it in a hurry, <laughs> and I haven't improved it since. Uh, okay, um, now it's a race between me and Anonymous to see who can gift the gifted sub first. All right, here we go, here we go, it's happening. <laughs> you! You! <laughs> You know, I guess I guess I can just blame I can just blame my, <laughs> I can just, I can just blame the fact that my overlay will not let me copy the name. <sighs> yes, it's called just black. <laughs> it's true, and technically I get more money because I didn't have to spend it. I don't know. Um, I'm I'm gonna actually t I'm gonna go really quick because um, I believe well, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a quick break. The thing is, it could end up being like a thirty minute break, but I am gonna come back. Uh, I will be back. So it's possible that this is only a five minute break, but um, I, I'll be back. We're going to continue this coding improv. Um, so far, we've really only done a couple things. Hey, Julie Palmer, thank you very much for that subscription. But we, we still need to, hey, and Hokey, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. We still need to incorporate uh, foods in the actual game aspect, but this is fun. Type. Type type a smile in the chat if you've at least had fun and if you've maybe learned at least one thing. Smile like all you gotta do is a is a little little bit smile. Yeah, and we got a hype train, but I gotta go for five minutes. Uh, auto gift sub from an overlay. I don't know if Twitch has a uh, has an API for gifting subs. Hey, Prodigimix, thank you for the hundred bits. This is really weird. Oh, geez, what just happened? Oh, Zozo, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. But I I do have to go. Five minute break. <laughs> five minute break. Be nice to each other. I'm going to put on some music while I'm gone. Um, I guess I could keep showing the screen. No, I'm gonna. we're going to go to my break screen. Back in five.
Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi, everybody. I'm back. <laughs> um, I guess, I guess we're ready. <laughs> we're ready to continue. I think what I want to do is I want to set like a 20 minute timer or 25 minute timer. So to do as like basically a speed run to implement all of these things. Right? Or to the best of my ability. <laughs> so <laughs> if you're just joining us, this is what we've created so far. Um, basically, uh, in the chat, you can uh, type exclamation mark join team followed by a two character country code, and it will add you to the team. You can see right now all of the representation that we have uh, of all the different countries that people have joined. Currently, uh, if we're going by number of people, United States of America is in the lead with 14, um, but it shouldn't be based on number of people. What we have right now is each team member has a score property. Right now it's zero. We need a way to increase the score of a given person. And what we have in the code is a few functions which we thought we might implement, like um, things like throw food, deploy dolphin, climb wall, nuke, attend university. <laughs> um, so... How how do we do that? I guess very obviously we probably want. I, I think it's I think it's gonna be emojis. It's gotta be emojis, right? Um. I think like maybe we kind of just make it like the drop game, where when a country deploys food, um, I don't know. It could be this could get really complicated though, because I don't know if I could do this in twenty five minutes. Yeah, we could use a canvas. I don't know. I don't know if I could do this, um, in. 25 minutes, but we could have something where the country, a horizontal, yeah, yeah, so side to side, we have something where the country flags are just like floating around on the screen, right? They're just floating around. And um, if, uh, and then when they throw food, it just, it just emits it in whatever, in some random direction. And if it hits another country, their points increase. That could be really cool. I don't know if I have the time to build that. I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> I don't know. Just help me. Like, what's the what's the least what's the least complex thing that I can do uh, to actually make this all work? Better get started. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. <laughs> um. Could just stand here for 20 minutes, right? A tree? Start with something and decide on the way. That's basically what I should do. This is improv, right? Just code. Once you start, you're amazing. <laughs> it's that initial mental block. All right, let's do this. We're basically going to have, instead of having everything just as text, I want these to be cards, and then I want these cards to be floating around the page. Let's at least get that working. Cards float around the page. Um, so, uh, let's look at bootstrap really quick. I think I'm gonna put I'm gonna put them in a card. So if we look at components and then we look at card and also I'm gonna set a uh, like a 20 minute 20 minute timer. See how far we get. Um, we're in the bootstrap docs. We want I think I'm gonna have like a super basic card and that card will have uh, like this basically like this and that card has all of the country information on, on it. Um, and so what we're gonna do in our HTML is instead of um, having the span, we will have a nice little card. And then the width, we're going to make even smaller. We'll make it like, I don't know, seven rim, seven, se seven rim. Um, and then the card title is going to be, uh, the team name like that. Um, the subtitle is going to be the amount of people on that team just so we can keep track of it, um, like that. And then we don't have any links, but we are going to have the card text just be the flag itself, this thing. And I think we can make it, uh, I think we can make it big. Um, let's look at this flag CSS library that we're using. And also we just need to move this, move this V4 to be on the card instead. So we can get rid of the, this now. I mean, it's, it's going to look decent. I think I think you all will will like how this looks. 
So now if you all join a team, it's going to be a nice little nice little card. Look at that. Beautiful. Um, we'll make it a little bit bigger. Let's do like 10 rim. And um, we'll call this team. And let's start adding some CSS. So over in our HTML, um, we're going to link a style sheet. Styles dot CSS. This should be in the source directory. Source slash styles. And then we need a styles file. Styles dot CSS. Um, use the country code instead of the name. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll make it wrap. But basically, we want the team to be display of inline flex with justified content center and align item center and text align center and we're in word word wrap what are my what are my what are the possibilities for word word wrap word break break all keep all I don't know. This now should, they should at least be horizontally there. Everything centered. <laughs> that's not bad. All right, we need a really, like somebody from the UK should join. Hey, that's not bad. See, you got that. Like it'll just, it just, it just new lines it. I mean, I guess technically if one of the words is bigger than um, the card itself, like this, which is not so bad. <laughs> That's actually that's actually bad. That's horrible. That's that's really bad. <laughs> hey, uh, Propuzio, thank you very much for that Twitch Prime sub. Uh, yeah, we could do a min height. I think we're just gonna show the country code. I think that's what we got. That's what we got to do. It is what we have to do. Um, so instead of the team name, we show the code, and then we we could show the country name like really 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 small, teeny tiny. Um, team dot name, and um. That way, it is um, uh, really small. So let's just give this a class of team name. And we're gonna make it so small. So small, you probably won't be able to see it, but maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit. Uh, and also, I totally forgot, I didn't even put display flex on this thing. <laughs> because if we do display flex, it'll actually be flex direction row by default, which I think is fine. Um, but now team name will have a font size of 0.2 rim. All right, everybody, let's see what happens. What'd you miss? Everything. <laughs> we could do ellipses, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look how small that country is. <laughs> it's actually hilarious. Um, wait, why, oh, cause I, all right, I already did display inline flex, that's why. Display flex should be row, it, sh it should be horizontal. I wanna see it as horizontal. Right? It's row by default. Right? Right? My name is CJ. Welcome to the coding card. <laughs> I think this is good enough. I think this, uh, but yeah, I, I, but flex direction defaults to row. Like I want this to be row. It could be because of this word break, break all. Uh, yeah, we could do uppercase. Um, do we have a class on it, though? We could do that with CSS. Let's do that with CSS. So right here on the code, we'll call this uh, team code. Needs flex wrap. Well, by default, there is no flex wrap, right? Right? But uh, team code will have a text transform of uppercase. Like that. And then also, let's decrease the width. Let's go to, like, 5 rim. Teeny tiny. Got little bitty cards. Because I want... I want these little these cards need to be like bounce bouncing around. Oh, you know what it is? By default, these classes like the card body class and the yeah that's that's what it is. I need to get rid of these these bootstrap classes. Um, like that. And we're not even gonna show the team name. And then technically card body, card body, I guess we want 
the card body to be like that. Here we go. Flex direction row. Beautiful, I guess. <laughs> I guess technically we'll put the flag on the next line. We'll put the flag on the next line. Um, what, what did we have before? We had card text. Yeah, this is good. Ship it. <laughs> good enough. Hey, uh, Ochi Tox, thank you very much for that uh, Twitch Prime sub. Uh, and we're going to put the team class on here. And then uh, this should look decent. No. No. Um, well, let's also call this team card. We're, we're almost there. We're almost there. <laughs> I swear we're almost there. Uh, but the team card uh, needs to have a display of inline block. So that way they go side by side. All right, here we go. Moment of truth. Just a bunch of tiny little cards. There we go. It's ugly. It's so ugly. <laughs> it's so ugly. I hate it. Um, I guess it's because we switched the flex direction to row. Because now technically I do want the... Um, um, I do want the country flag. Oh, we'll get there because the code and the count should be on the same line like this But then the card text Should be on the next line. Wait, why is that happening? Oh, well, it's fine. It's fine. This is perfectly fine <laughs> All I want to do now is I want to make that flag way bigger way way bigger um, Is there like a big Size Oh, the background could be the flag. I don't know if I can do that with this library, though. That actually would be awesome. That would be that would look way cooler, wouldn't it? Ugh. Okay, let's just look at the styles really quick and see if we can affect it. Um, we have a span. It has a background image. Okay. I have an idea. I have an idea. Um, we're going to take this span. It is no longer going to be the card text. We are going to uh, absolutely position it behind uh, everything. Um, we're going to say uh, the class we're going to give it is flag BG. And flag BG will have a width and height of 100%. Width, 100%. Height, 100%. Um, and that, oh no, and then, uh, position is absolute, top zero, left zero, so that should put it at the top left of the card itself, and then, um, we're currently inside of the team element? Yeah, team. Team should have a width of 100% and a height of 100%. Yeah, we'll make it a little transparent, it'll be great. It'll be great. Here we go. We're on. We're on our way. Um, so the team has a width and height of one hundred percent. Team should have a uh, position of relative. Let's see what we get. Now it could just be that the flag is in the top left corner, and if that's the case, we need to. Well, the um, top zero, left zero. Not quite right. <laughs> let's look. Let's look at the element itself. <laughs> so this flag, okay, it's um, it's basically inside of the the flex box. Uh, does it have the flag BG class on it? It does have flag BG. And um, oh, the width here we have is one M. I see. But if we undo that, oh, not bad. Okay, so. Here's what we got to do. We have to increase the specificity of our, um, heck yeah. <laughs> we have to increase the specificity of our of our width property because right now it's being overridden. Now, we could do this. We could make it important. We could say this is so important, important, that it should be 
Um, yeah, you could do important, but I'm going to show you a. There's a better way. There's a better way. Yeah, yeah. So it technically works. It's not. It's not the right aspect ratio. I think that's fine. Yeah. But here's the here's the way that you should do it as a CSS developer. Is you need to increase the specificity. And right now, the specificity is just the flag BG selector. But if we make it more specific, if we say uh, card. But, or we say team dot flag dash bg that actually has a higher specificity. So select the flag bg element inside of the element called team. Let's see if this is enough, if this is enough specificity. Specificity. <laughs> it is not. That is not enough specificity. Um, let's go one level higher. So we want team card dot team. <laughs> and technically like if you if you really if you really want to um uh, be picky about it you could actually calculate the specificity um um i forgot the space bar oh you're right it's probably specific enough but we'll get even more specific <laughs> that should do it yeah cool 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 uh now let's just lower the z index um, negative one, and then have an opacity of like 0 0.5. All right, here we go. Specificity, specificity. You can't see it at all. <laughs> Z index of one, maybe? For whatever reason, uh, it's not appearing behind the stuff. Oh, there it is. It's actually not that bad. Flag BG dot flag BG. <laughs> that technically would work, wouldn't it? Let's get specific. Is this good enough? Yeah, it was probably behind the card before that. I think this is good enough. This is good enough. My overlay has crashed again. <laughs> Things are going swimmingly. Great work, everyone. At this point, I think all I want to do is I just want to get these flags floating around the page. That's really all I want. It'll basically be like the DVD logo screen, but with all the flags. Um, okay, uh, let me restart my overlay, and then we will go from there. Oh yeah, Ma the majority of developers in the world do follow the trial and error approach. There's a more, I mean, technically if you do, uh, like, test-driven development, it's kind of like trial and error. I mean, you're explicitly writing failing tests and then making them pass, so... Yeah, but look at this. Look at all the people joining all the teams. It actually is really hard to see the text behind there, but that's okay. Not gonna worry about that. All right, let's make these things move. Okay, so here's what we want to do. Uh, we want to have some sort of game loop, so that way we can uh, update the lo the location of all of these things, and they should start on a, in a random place on the page. Um, so uh, when we add a team to the page. Uh, the team should also have a location, and that is just going to have an X. It's going to start off at zero, and a Y that's going to start off at zero. Uh, and it's also going to have a velocity. So it's going to start moving. It's going to start moving. Um, and the X velocity um, will be math.random times five. We can increase it at most five units, and then the y velocity similarly will be uh, math.random times five. Um, and we potentially want it to be negative. Like we always, actually, let's put them at a random location too. So we want the a random x location for the window width. So we can do math.random times window dot inner width, and then s same thing with y. Inner height, and then the velocity. Uh, we it could potentially we, we could potentially be negative, so it goes in different directions as well. So we can just say something like um, if um, math dot random is greater than zero point five, then negative one, otherwise one, and we multiply that whole thing times a random value between zero and five. So now it's either it, it's it's very quite possibly a either negative or positive x or y velocity okay uh up arrow works in the chat yeah I th it might be a Franker faces thing or a better twitch tv thing i'm not sure 
Uh, but yeah, up arrow in the chat works, just like in your terminal. Uh, okay, so a thing has a random location, it has a random velocity. Now, let's put it at that random location. So because a team has a location property, uh, we can just do a style binding. So um, we right now are, um, we have, we're repeating over teams by count. Um, let me format this with prettier. Very nice. So we're repeating, but now we want to bind the style attribute. And we're going to say um, the top is going to be team.location.y. And we need to put the word pixel on that. Pix, like that. And then the left is uh, team.location. Uh, dot x with pixels on it just like that um, but now we want team card to be position absolute so team card position absolute all right so now it should just appear in a random place on the page instead of um, yeah so there's uh is that cameroon <laughs> look at them they're all over the place <laughs> That's cool. So now they're just in random places. Uh, now we actually want them to move. Um, so we'll have some sort of game loop that um, uh, as it as it moves along, and actually you can see here that they're sl appearing slightly off page because it's uh, it's not accounting for the width of the element. We kind of, let's, let's fix that. We don't want it to appear off the page. So we could say uh, when we get the random X value, it could be uh, window dot inner width minus the width of the element, and I actually don't know what the width of the element is. <laughs> so let's figure out what the width of the element. It's a it's a constant width. Oh no, I do know what it is. It's in rims. It is. Um, we explicitly set it five rim. What's five times sixteen? Should be eighty pixels. All right, let's use pixels instead. And uh, it's a magic number, that's fine. Minus 80. That way it'll never appear off this page. Collision detection! <laughs> oh, I guess we technically need to do the height too. So uh, let's figure out what the, what the height is of these, of these elements. Again, it's hard coded. Um, and technically, these elements are um, not 80 high, they are 78.33333 and 99.2. Uh, so this should be 78.33333, and then the height is um, 99.2. Look at these beautiful magic numbers. It's great. All right, now they should always appear on the page itself and never off of the page. All right, let's get them moving. Um, so we need we need some sort of game loop. After it's created, we're listening for all this stuff. Uh, perfect job. Oh, good job. Um, and we just want them to move. Set the size to a fixed size. You know, you're you're not wrong, are you? <laughs> That's like perfect. <laughs> we could do that. Um, width and height, I guess. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Um, what I want, I just want them to move on the page. That's the last thing I'm going to do. I want these flags to be just moving around. That could be fun, right? Right? Um, so when it's created, uh, we'll just call this dot game loop. Like that. And then we can have a method called game loop. And inside the game loop, we'll just do this dot update and this dot render. Actually, we don't even need this time. <laughs> we actually just need to call update. Um, and then we'll just call update again in uh, one second. This dot update. And this dot update is just a simple little thing that iterates over all of the teams. So um, we'll just iterate over them like this. So we'll say uh, teams by count dot uh, for each one. And the reason I'm iterating over this is because it's already an array, whereas teams is a map and I'd have to get the, the values, but this is fine. This is fine. Everything's fine. So this.teams by count for each team. And then we were going to say um, 
uh, team dot location dot x plus equals team dot location dot velocity dot x um, and team dot location dot y plus equals team dot velocity dot y. That's it. Now they're just going to bounce around. Well, here's the, we don't have collision detection yet, so we potentially want them to bounce off of each other, and we potentially want them to uh, bounce off of the sides and the edge. Um, it's not working. Why isn't it working? We called the game loop. Um, the start, the start. <laughs> Does anyone know why, why isn't it working? We should be calling game loop, right? Calling update, 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 update. Um, and it's already looking at the location. Well, teams by count is technically a computed property, so we should be able to access it. I'm not seeing any error here. Uh, let's log team.location. So the CSS is looking at the specific value. So it's the CSS is looking at the team.location.y and team.location.x. Um, but we are modifying those. So Vue.js should see that they have changed. Um, oh, you're right. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 you're absolutely right. Like that. So update should I mean, technically, this is our game loop, <laughs> right? We'll, we'll just call it update, because that's what it is. So now we can just call it update. Yeah, you're right. I was only calling it once, but we, we want to call it over and over again once every second. Okay. This should do it. Didn't do it. <laughs> oh, there we go. Yeah, because it's, it's once per second. They're like, whoop, whoop, whoop. <laughs> it's teeny tiny, but uh, let's go even faster than that. Thirty episodes. I mean, we could do we could do instead of doing um, set timeout, we could do uh, request animation frame. Hey, NovaScript, Prime button not working. We'll try again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you very much, NovaScript, for the hundred hundred and one bits. Uh, but yeah, we'll do uh, request animation frame. Um, I'm gonna do that with an arrow function just so the this stays the same. Should be fine, right? Okay, now that one's gone. <laughs> Just, it's gone. That one's gone too. <laughs> Would you look at that? Okay, now that's great. But what we want is that we want them to bounce off the edges. This is the last thing we're going to do. Um, last thing I'm going to do is um, make them bounce off the edges and then, and then we're done. So <laughs> we're going to do the update. And then we're going to say uh, if... Uh, team dot location dot x is greater than or equal to um, window dot inner uh, width plus these magic variables. I'll extract it out. Flag width. Hey, Jakob, thank you for the 100 bits. Same here, resub tomorrow. <laughs> uh, so flag width is equal to that value. So um, uh, if, um, where am I at? Got a lot of code, got a lot of code. Where, uh, right here. So if location.x is greater than or equal to window.inner width minus uh, flag width, then uh, team.location.x equals window.inner width. Minus, so we're going to make sure that it like is right before the edge, plus like two pixels, just to be sure. Um, and then um, velocity uh, equals itself uh, times equals a negative one. So it should bounce off the edges. That's it. That's all. That's all it takes. So now they should bounce, it should bounce off the right edge, or like this edge over here. Well, we won't be able to test it with that one. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so, now we also want to do the left edge. Um, if, if, so if uh, team.location.x is less than or equal to zero. Like that. So now they should bounce off the sides. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we got to do the Ys, but here we go. US is going to bounce. US bounces. Boom. Great work. All right, AT should bounce off the left. Okay, so now, <laughs> now we need the same collision detection for the top and the bottom. Um, so uh, we'll say if team.location.y is less than or equal to zero, team.location.y equals two. I'm, I realize I could just say zero here, but I want to I want to be sure that it is not passed and like it gets stuck. So it's probably a better way. Um, okay, so uh, do that, and then otherwise, if y team .location .y is greater than or equal to the window height, so window .inner height plus the flag height, which is also this magic number. All right, see you later, Julian. Thank you for hanging out. Flag height. We want this here. Flag height uh, equals that. Yeah, minus the height. I just got to get that height variable <laughs> right here. So uh, window inner height, mi yeah, minus the height. You're right. If it's greater than or equal to that, the y location equals window dot inner height minus the flag height minus two for good measure. And then we flip the y velocity. All right, this is it. Moment of truth. I realized that there are a ton of things that we did not, we did, we did not incorporate tacos, bananas, ketchup, dolphin, university, or climbing. But we do have this wonderful app where countries just kind of bounce around. <laughs> and it's based on all the people that are in the chat. So that's cool. Um, yeah, look at us. Food fight. <laughs> you can see the app is like, it's bouncing. I think the, the fix for that is to just disable scrolling on the body. Let's do body um, overflow is hidden. And that way um, it won't like jiggle, jiggle. It won't jiggle when they go to the sides. All right, see you later, ACM. Thank you for hanging out. Yeah, this, this is the beginnings of some very cool stuff. So I realize we didn't do everything that I wanted to do. <laughs> There are, there are a lot of people from UK. It's hard. To, it's really hard to see. Uh, UA, is this? What country is this? There's nine of you. Um, there's one in Argentina. Uh, there's three from Brazil. Oh, go faster if they're... Hey, I'm not opposed to it. I am not opposed to it. Let's do it. Um, so whenever somebody joins a team, increase the velocity. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Um, We'll say, uh, yeah, so when someone joins a team, we'll say team.velocity.x plus equals one. And y plus equals one. So, and I, oh no, let's, let's make it really dramatic, five. So every time somebody joins, it increases by five. Wait. The size could be bigger or smaller. Yeah, you're right. You're right. But then our, my magic variables would go away. We're going to do by two. All right. The only trick with this is that they're actually going to start off with um, fast. Okay, so let's see it happen. Like, Brazil, there's only one. So Brazil's pretty slow. Uh, let's see. There's four in Great Britain. Oh, you're right. They slow down with negative speeds. <laughs> So it actually needs to be, uh, we need we need some logic because right now if it's negative, it actually slows down. We can see the U.S. is bouncing. There's, what is that? I can't even see the number. Um. <laughs> hey, Sky, tier three. Whoa, whoa. Thank you very much for the sub. Sky, two, one, four, seven. Uh, multiply by a positive number. You're right. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to say times equal two. So it, it speeds up by two every time somebody joins. All right. This is the last time. Here it is. Join your countries now. Thank you very much, David, for the Twitch Prime sub. Uh, the more that join, the faster it goes. <laughs> well, that's insane. Uh... <laughs> Malaysia is just bouncing horizontally. <laughs> that's actually too fast. Um, let's go by 1.1. Uh, should be a little, a little more gradual. 
Um, all right, last time. For real. For real this time. The drop game on steroids <laughs> by People's Country. All right, there we go. UA. UA is bouncing. Got seven people. Yeah, so we, we want to keep it negative. That was the issue before is we were... Um, look how slow they... Some of them move if there's only one. Yeah, so it looks like Deutschland. Great job, Deutschland. <laughs> there's 12 people. Um, yeah, and then this one has like a no Y velocity. It's just bouncing back and forth. Probably has very little Y velocity. Okay, yeah, UA is off the chain. There's so many people in that country. The US has nine people. It's bouncing. Um... Belgium with three people. <laughs> it's a race car. Yeah, look at it. Oh, it hit the, it hit, it's hitting the corner. We've we, we've it's in a it's in a corner loop. You you can see it. it's hits it, it's it's bouncing back and forth between the corners. Okay, this is it. I'm done. I realize I did not incorporate all the things that we said we were going to incorporate. But you know what? It's my show, so I get to do what I want. Also, that that was hard, and we wrote a lot. Of, we wrote a lot of codes today. Uh, quick recap of what we did for those of you that are just joining us. Um, all of the, this app was basically influenced by chat at the very beginning. We had everyone or uh, if you could the first 10 people to submit a suggestion and we we're trying to incorporate those suggestions. So uh, the theme that we went with was from just Naf who recommend who suggested tournament. So like, all right, this needs to be some sort of competition. Um, uh, I'm Tom Eddie and awaited both suggested a country name and then we have some other suggest suggestions with tacos bananas ketchups dolphin We didn't get to incorporate any of this the the, the idea was like <laughs> look at UA go. It's at light speed um, But the idea was eventually Hey, Nova script it worked. Thank you for the two month resub very much appreciated But eventually uh, these countries could like fire food at each other and then you could get points based on if you actually hit them This is as far as we got which is fine. Uh, and then we were gonna do other things too, but you can see in the code, we were, we were ready for it. We had a command handler for throw food, deploy dolphin, climb the wall, do a nuke. So maybe in the future we'll revisit this. Probably not. Like one of the main ideas with coding improv is that we just code a thing and then we kind of never look at it again, but it was fun while, it was, while we did it and you all were a part of it. So that's pretty awesome too. Um, but the app itself, some pretty basic HTML, like it just has a card that's repeated. We are using TMI to talk to Twitch Twitch chat. Uh, we have a very simple app here that brings in view. Uh, we're talking to the um, REST countries API to get a list of all the countries. So we're validating the countries whenever people join. Uh, we're using this uh, flag, <laughs> make UA invisible. Look at it go, look at it go. <laughs> uh, we're using uh, this CSS library called um, flag icons to uh, show the flag icons themselves. Uh, and yeah, it'll, it'll be uploaded to Git. And actually, I'll just add it to Git right now. Um, here, yeah. Add episode two. There we go, it's on Git. If you do exclamation mark inventory, you can get a link to the GitHub repo. Uh, I'll need to update the readme with the link and all that stuff. Oh, and let, let, me, let me deploy it too. Um, how should we do this? We'll use Surge. Let's deploy it with Surge. Um, that's good. We're gonna call this Country Tourney. Tourney? Is that like a shorthand word for tournament? <laughs> Is that right? Tour Tourney? We we'll call it country food fight. We actually didn't. This is okay. This is how I'm incorporating all of the food suggestions. We're literally just going to call it food fight. That's it. There we go. It's on the internet. So if you go to this web page, um, it, it's going to reload. So there is no database. There's no memory. Basically, uh, if you join a team now, it'll show up here. Um, but we did make it so that if you if you uh, specify, I didn't even test this. But if we say channel equals some other channel. Um, Let's see who's live right now. Uh, <laughs> we could do like a pre-raid. We could go into somebody's chat and just start spamming. Oh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. But if you want to use this on your stream, um, you can specify the channel name. Coding Garden. Um, and it will actually listen in that channel instead of just Coding Garden. So there's that. Check it out. Go to my chat. No, <laughs> we'll leave it there. <laughs> so it's on the internet. Um, that's it. 
thank you all for watching. This was super fun. Um, oh yeah, I didn't. I guess I didn't finish talking about the code. We get the countries. We then decided to use Vue.js to actually do the stuff on the page. It makes it really easy. We had to do a, a lot less manual code. Um, and the other thing was we attempted to use a map with Vue because we're being fancy, but then we realized that maps don't directly work with Vue.js, so we implemented our own map data structure. Look at us. We're fancy. Um, and then it's just code. Code makes it happen. All right, let's.